Hi there and welcome to 272analytics.com's tutorial on hurdle regression in Stata, also known as Crag hurdle regression after the scholar who invented or first proposed this model in 1971. So in order to do the hurdle regression, I'm just going to follow the Stata documentation and walk you through what they've done. The first thing we're going to do is load the, uh, load the data set called fitness. That is one of the pre-existing data sets in Stata. And it's this this data set is about I guess predictors of hours of exercise that take place uh, I believe during a week. And hours of exercise is going to be basically our our dependent variable in this model. So the first thing that we want to do I think is look at a histogram of it because that histogram is closely related to why we would want to use hurdle regression in the first place. So here's the histogram of hours exercised daily. And we see that there's a huge spike of people who don't exercise at all. So I, by the way, I was wrong about the data. It's not weekly, it's daily. So uh, a fair amount of folks get no exercise whatsoever. And then there's, a, there's another, you know, sort of a long tail distribution over here of people who do get to exercise. And what gets done in hurdle regression, and I'm just going to paste in the code and kind of talk you through it. There's a couple of uh, couple of things that are different here, um, not just theoretically but practically from linear regression. And I will refer you to Crag, and also to Stata documentation's discussion of the theoretical reasons that we might want to choose a hurdle regression over, uh, you know, an ordinary least squares regression or some other form of truncation. Let me just talk you through what this is and, in practical terms, why you might need it. The first thing I want to highlight in the code here, after the command select, uh, commute, uh, work hours, and age, these are what are called the hurdle variables. So what's a hurdle variable? I think the easiest way to conceptualize it is, uh, you know, the words, it's right there in the, in the title for your hurdle variable. You have to jump over some things in order to start. Okay, so let's bring that concept to exercise. In order to start exercising, you need to get over some things first, right? Maybe some challenges, some hurdles, as it were. Maybe it's commute time, maybe it's work hours, maybe it's your age, maybe these are the things that prevent you from starting to exercise. Now, those are the hurdle variables. If we come over here, uh, this is the aspect of the command, by the way, a C hurdle linear, because this is a linear model, since hours here is continuous. These are all the variables that we are interested in modeling their effect on hours of exercise after this hurdling takes place. So say that an individual that we've accounted for their commute time, their work hours, and their age all as predictors of having begun to exercise, in other words, having a non-zero value for daily exercise. After that, we have this sort of second stage model of predicting how many actual hours they exercise based on these variables that we specified, age, their smoking uh, status, their relationship status, and I think this, this is probably distance from, you know, fitness facility or whatever. Eyes have been put here because these are categorical variables, and when we put I here, this will kind of break it out so that the coefficients will speak to smoking and being single. Here we have LL, which is lower level, and we're just going to specify zero for the, and, and please note this is not 11, by the way, this is LL, I'm repeating myself. The zero here is our truncation. We're basically saying that we can't get any lower than zero hours of exercise, right? We cannot get negative hours of exercise. So we go ahead and we specify that here right at the end of all the code. And by the way, you can go and, you know, you can get this code a couple places. You can get it in the Stata documentation or... You can also just copy it, you know, watching your YouTube screen or maybe get it from 272analytics.com. There is no substitute for actually entering the code in yourself and getting results and then tinkering around to figure out what you're doing. So let's enter that. It's going to take us a little while, but we have generated our model. We see that it is significant over here. And we have these two kind of stages over here that we're interested in for practical purposes. We we want to look at the hurdle variables and we see that 
having a commute lowers the hours of exercise being older lowers the hours of exercise or can I rephrase that not not lowers the hours of exercise it's more lowers the chances of beginning to exercise in the first place which is not quite the same thing so remember how we talked about the concept of the hurdle variable being the thing that you have to get over in order to begin something in order to get a positive value of something so a rephrased more accurate way of talking about these variables here is that uh, commuting having a having a longer commute and uh, an older age uh, lowers the chances, as it were, that you would exercise at all. Okay, so once you've considered that, then you move over to this aspect of the model, which predicts how all of these variables influence your actual hours of exercise themselves. And we see that we have coefficients here that we do not necessarily want to interpret what's recommended here is to use the margins command uh, comma dy dx and here in the parentheses I've just put underscore all so that we can get marginal effects of all the variables these are the coefficients that are going to be more familiar to you from regression they're more easy to interpret in terms of their effect on the dependent variable it's going to take a minute to run it um, as soon as that's done we're going to see them and I'll talk you through them okay here we go so here, for example, we see that being single is associated with an extra, you know, about 0.39 hours of exercise per day. Um, we see that smoking is associated with uh, 0.36 hours less of exercise per day. There's a negative effect of distance traveled there's a negative effect of age uh, with each year of age here because age is continuous unlike smoking and being single uh, for every added year of age an individual exercises 0 0.02 hours less per day and so forth so that's how you interpret you know these coefficients uh, act more like regression coefficients that people are more familiar with and they all have p-values here and we see that everything is significant except work hours and if you go ahead and you compare uh, these marginal coefficients here with what we got in the raw model, you'll see that they're different. You'll see that the directionality is not different. You know, what was negative here is negative here, and what was positive here is also positive here, but you can't really interpret these for practical purposes. And so you will need to interpret them by issuing this command here and I, I prefer just to do you know underscore all so I can get all of the variables in there um, it could be that there's just one variable in which you're interested and if so you would just replace underscore all with the name of the variable that you're interested in or the names and finally as you might know after every margins command in stat you can create a margins plot just by typing it in and that will just give you a quick uh, overview of you know the effects and so you can kind of see for example that being signal being single is associated with uh, way more daily exercise uh, being smoking uh, smoking exerts you know pretty marked negative uh, effect on the number of hours that one exercises and, and so forth for the other variables um, anyway I hope that you would keep hurdle regression in mind it might not come up very frequently but in those cases in which the histogram looks like the hours of exercise histogram that I showed you where you have a huge bunch of zero values and then a kind of long tail of positive values and second if there's nothing lower than the zero value those are classic conditions in which hurdle regression is recommended there are some other alternatives to it and we will talk about those but hurdle regression is widely widely recommended under those circumstances and the very last thing that you want to do for technical reasons but nonetheless profound reasons is not to use a linear regression or some form of you know manual truncation when hurdle regression is available to you instead I hope this tutorial was helpful to you and I would like to invite you to visit 272analytics.com for access to all our free statistics tutorials in Stata, SPSS, R, eViews, and Minitab. Here at 272analytics.com we provide data consulting primarily to graduate students. 
Therefore, we work very closely with you in order to perfect your chapter three and chapter four. That means helping you design surveys, uh, getting your data input, assisting you with fashioning appropriate research questions and hypotheses, uh, getting your data, extracting them, transforming them, cleaning them, uh, putting them through analysis, uh, interpreting them, explaining them to you so that at the end of the day, you know exactly what story your data tell, why they matter, what they mean in a manner that lets you write a, a perfect chapter four uh, following a perfect chapter three and lets you defend your dissertation or thesis with complete confidence. We provide ethical consulting. It's not a writing service, so you will be responsible for taking our blueprint, our assistance, our consulting, and transforming them into an appropriate academic project for yourself. I'd also like to remind you that we provide the same services to undergraduate students who are working with quantitatively oriented assignments. Thank you so much for listening and have a great day.